action. Following on my series of stuff that people say that is an absolute load of nonsense and damaging disinformation, um, I'm going to talk to you about RCDs. RCDs, what they're called in the States, GFIs, which I think are largely the same things, uh, are designed, uh, so are present in an AC mains electrical system uh, to, well, prevent death basically. Um, you see people messing around with AC electrics all the time and part of the reason that people are happy to piss about with mains electric in their house and kind of be like, well it's fine, it's okay, is unwittingly they've got no idea how much the RCD is playing a part in keeping them safe. Because if they do something a bit stupid, um, it's got them, well, they're still walking around, which is a massive surprise to me. But anyway, so AC, the way that I term it with vans um, when I'm trying to sell my services to people is if you get DC wrong, it burns your van down. If you get AC wrong, it kills you and then it burns your van down. So just bear that in mind with everything that I'm doing here, especially as I've got a lot of wires exposed. So I've done a video that Pixie has patiently edited I'm sure by now, about what separates, in my opinion, a good from a bad inverter, why there was some confusion about me delivering a, a video that stated what made a good and bad one, my conclusion video to my earlier test. Um, and this kind of plays into it, but that video was already getting very long-winded, so I've decided to do the RCD bit uh, and earthing as a general uh, terminology as a, as a separate video so should so the question is should you earth your van chassis that comes up a lot um yes the answer is a resounding yes definitely yes always yes in my opinion um here's a bit of disinformation for you okay People talk all the time about electricity wanting to find its way to Earth, okay? In the same way as people will tell you that all water wants to try and make its way back to the ocean. Well, that's just nonsense, okay? Because, and they'll use lightning strikes and the fact that some people on their properties have what they call a TT system, which is an electrical spike in the ground, a conductive rod, in the ground they'll use all sorts of reasons as to why what i've just said is massive disinformation and then they'll also cite things like your van is on rubber tires by the way you can get electrically conductive rubber tires generally aren't but you can get electrically conductive uh, rubber in in scenarios but that don't make any difference either electricity is not trying to find its way to earth in the same way as water is not sat in a pool uh, or, a, or a lake or something that happens to be below sea level going, how am I going to climb that hill to make it to the ocean? It just simply wants to sit at the lowest point. That's the effect that gravity has on it. And it's got no will of its own. And it's the same with electricity. It's got no ambition to find its way to Earth. What it does want to do is find its way back to the start, okay? So that's what we're going to concentrate on here. Not when things go wrong, when things go wrong correctly. So when things go wrong right. Anyway, we've got ourselves down here a Renogy inverter. It's a pure sine wave inverter. And for that reason, people will tell you, as I stated in my previous video, that it is it works the same as the power socket if you like that comes out of your your grid mains which it doesn't and if you watch the previous video congratulations for getting through it and also you'll have you'll not have seen yet but you'll see from the voltage point of view that it doesn't work the same as a main socket uh, RCDs come in a variety of shapes and sizes. This is an older type of RCD here that we no longer really utilise. The reason being 
is that are a bit susceptible to DC interference and on a van certainly there's lots of DC flying around so we'll get rid of that. This is another type of RCD, this is a piece of equipment that I have that I use when I'm out on site and this is an RCD socket, unusually this is a double pole RCD um, but still uh, it's not suitable for these sort of applications uh, because it's uh, a non-latching RCD, that is to say every time you cut the power this cuts off as if it's blown, okay, as if it's been tripped. So it's a type of RCD that is out there, which is why I'm showing it you, but it's not one we're going to utilise. The type we're going to concentrate on is this sort of thing here, which under normal circumstances resides within an enclosure a lot better than I have it there. I've just got this set up for test purposes. I've got a mains socket there that then wires in through the top of the RCD. Neutral and live go in. Neutral then goes to a bar here where all the neutrals reside and the live comes out on a metal strip that's covered by a plastic cover there which then feeds power into these. These are our MCBs. Now if you think the RCD there is to protect you as a human being from a possible electrocution, not in all instances, I'll go into that in just a moment, this here, think of it as a kind of a fuse, if you will. So that's a 16 amp MCB. So if you started to draw 20 amps from this socket or from whatever was connected to this wire, that would trip because it would know that the cable and socket outlets and things like that don't have the current carrying capacity. So that's there to protect your wiring that's there to protect you. Uh, I'll have a number of people cite that in a van installation, these should now be double pole. So these should be live and uh, neutral, or line and neutral as we call it now. But I'm gonna use this setup here because this is most commonly the sort of thing that people will buy, particularly if they've gone to a website and bought garage consumer unit which is what a lot of people do, that's what you'll be presented with, that's what you'll be looking at, okay? Uh, so what I've got, I can energise it on the one end, and then it goes to a socket, and at the end of this socket is an RCD tester. Now you can buy a variety of RCD testers, where you press a button and it, it, it forms a trip. This is my favourite one, because... Well, it's just so selectable, okay? So I can plug it into a main socket outlet, which I will do now. Ah! By the way, when this is plugged in, I'm obviously not gonna go touching any of these connectors. I might be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. Okay, so that is plugged in. No, it isn't. It's plugged in and turned on. That's <laughs> helpful, isn't it? Okay. Then I can see on my little screen here that I can set my test scenario. So the amount of fault. So on the lowest setting there, it does now at 30 milliamps, which is what I would anticipate this RCD is. I press it and that's all my sockets off now, and we heard a bang from in there, mm -hmm. where I've now got to reset the RCD, which I will do in a moment. Action. So, Renergy Inverter is plugged in, set up, running, via our RCD, which is convincingly working, because if I hit the test button, it is working. If, if this is inert, if this is off, that test button doesn't work okay what's happening is it is itself causing an electrical fault and as such it is switching and it won't work when there's no power so we're going to apply power by turning the inverter on okay and then we're going to test it and it's working there and legend would have it 
that if you press that test button and it works, downstream, your things like your RCD testers and stuff will work and you are protected. If you did something stupid, you will be protected. Now, grabbing hold of the live and grabbing hold of the neutral simultaneously is not considered a fault scenario. The reason being, that's how things are powered. You've got a water heating element, for example, and both the live and neutral have to be connected on that water heater element for it to do anything. However, if we take, for instance, this fridge, okay, and we move it around and somebody strains the cable and the live connector or line connector comes out of its socket internally and touches on the metal casework of here. What that would mean in a scenario is that you've got, in a, in a fault scenario, is you've got the, the live side of things then in combination with the metal casework. And because the metal casework is earth, the current that is coming down the live cable doesn't go to ground, okay? What it does is it comes back to this electrical box, but it comes back not via the neutral. It comes back via the earth conductor. And because current has left the circuit that is then not returned, through the same path through the RCD, the RCD goes, oh, crikey, blimey. There's a fault scenario and it disengages the power. So let me just recap. If live leaves, it's got to come back on the neutral, okay? And all the time, the same amount of power is leaving down the live cable or line cable and returning on the neutral, okay? things are hunky-dory and the RCD will continue to keep this power flow going, okay? But if a fault scenario occurs and the line comes into contact with, as I've said, for example, the metal casework of a fridge, which is earthed, or let's pretend the live cable comes dislodged and touches the metal surface of your van. If it does that, and your chassis is earth, e.g. connected to the other side of the RCD, the, you know, the earth side of this connecting block here, if that happens, then that live will travel down the conductive material, which is the van body, via the earth cable, then back to here. And because it's gone out one way, but then it's come back to the source a different route than via the neutral, the RCD will know about this in a very short space of time and it will disengage, okay? So the electricity in the fault scenario hasn't got to find its way into a ground spike tapped into the ground. It's just got to find its way back to the source via a different route other than the neutral. And if it does that, then our RCD will trip, right? Sorry for that little rant there, but there's so much disinformation. I just really need people to, if you, I appreciate this isn't it for everyone, but if you're trying to find out the answers, hopefully um, I'm, I'm giving you the correct information here and backing it up with test scenarios. So my RCD is good to go. My MCB is good to go. In my socket here, I've got 232 volts. So we know that my inverter is on and it's working through. If I click that off, this dies, okay? There's no more volts, okay? So now all we need to do is set this to 30 milliamp up here. Oh, sorry. On the tester, and it test. And it test. And it test. It's not that this is broken in the meantime, it's that that, that energy inverter Big fat will not trip an RCD as is. Okay, so let's now cut away to the inverter that we cited in the last video as being neutral earth bonded and see what happens with that one. Action. Right, so this has got the fuse in place which turns it into a neutral earth bonded uh, inverter. 
or the, uh, the alternative to that is a center tapped inverter. You can tell the difference because if you measure voltage between live and neutral, you get 230 volts. If you measure the voltage between live and earth, you get 230 volts. If you measure the power between neutral and earth, you get zero. There is no power on either the earth or negative leg of this. There is only live or line and neutral or earth, right? So we've done that to this. It's on. We can see that it's on because again, the Martindale plugged in there is the, it's the, this inverter is delivering 229 volts. I plug in my RCD tester. Should have let it die. Bear with. Gets its power from the device that's powering it. Okay, so we plug it in. I get my little weight symbol. I've set it to 30 milliamps. A hit test. Oh, I have to wait for it to go out. Hit test. Oh. And there we go. The RCD is sprung. Okay. Now, again, I can do the same test. I can turn it on and hit test all day long. Okay. And with this turned off, it will fail to work. It has to have power running through it for the RCD's own test to work. But just because it's working like that doesn't necessarily mean that further down the line, it, the RCD side of it will actually work. But in this scenario, every single time without fail, providing I meet the the power, the, the fault current needed to perform the test. So if I set it to 10 and hit test, it's just faulted 10 milliamps to earth, but that's not enough to trip the RCD. So now I'll just whiz it round to max. 500 milliamps, half an amp. That is considerable. Boom, no time at all. It's thrown the RCD. So, should you earth your van? Yes. Should you, because in case a live conductor comes into contact with um, the chassis of the van, it's gonna trip the RCD, providing you are using an inverter that has, uh, that it can, you can neutral earth bond or comes neutral earth bonded out the box. If it doesn't, it might have its own short circuit protection, but so far I've not been able to trigger that. Certainly, I've not been able to get an RCD tester to trip the RCD, and I've not, not been able to get the inverter itself to turn itself off. If I plug this RCD tester directly into an inverter or another device that's a bit cruder, I can't get them to to disengage so this short circuit protection I surmise must just be on the DC side of things not the AC but I don't know so sorry if you've bought an inverter and you've got it connected to an RCD and you've convinced yourself that it could potentially save your life in the instance that there's a, a live earth fault but my testing says otherwise I'm afraid and that's for a, a variety of RCD testers. It just so happens that this is my most sophisticated one. So there we are. I hope that was useful to someone at least. Thanks ever so much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.